start learning the broader picture of, of how normal, quote, normal human beings uh, are influenced by group dynamics, by authority issues, by situational variables, and start learning about other cults. And start talking to former members who were born in other cults and listen to their tales, because it will give you a perspective, a much deeper perspective as opposed to just reacting against what you grew up with. It'll help you step back and say, you know what? I'm not alone. I wasn't stupid. This is a worldwide epidemic. And by the way, people say, what's the largest cult, Steve? Anybody want to guess? What's the largest cult? I'm inviting you on it. Islam. Catholic Church. Islam. Islam. How about China? Isn't China the largest country on earth? I've got news for you, they're, they're reforming, but they're still a mind control call. By my criteria, which was going to go up. But if you think about it, if you're, if you're visiting from outer space, looking at free will and choice on, on planet Earth, more people are still enslaved than are thinking for themselves. I mean, if you, if you, if you really put it in perspective, we're at a very you know, early part of our evolution as a species. God knows we hope that we're going to live to keep this planet together. So figuring out who you believe. And I also want to point out one other very important concept, which is the issue of modeling. Modeling is essentially taking an example of something that works and comparing it with an example of something that doesn't work so well. Or taking an example of functionality and comparing it with dysfunctionality. So for all of you who are born in a cult, you need to kind of study what is normal developmental psychology. Like if you were in a family, a quote, normal American family, what would your experiences have been like? And I've done a lot of work with former Jehovah's Witnesses, for example. And by the way, when I wrote Combating, I didn't think they were a cult either. And I got like hundreds of letters from Jehovah's Witnesses who were saying, I underlined your entire book. I couldn't put it down. How come you didn't mention the Watchtower Society? I'm like, why were they, are they a cult? <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> but um, basically helping them to, again, instead of just react against what they were raised up in or saying, you know what, all religions are evil, you know, all spiritual experiences is wrong, realize the big, the big picture is influence. Ethical influence versus unethical influence. The big picture is, is there are political cults like China, there are therapy cults, there are business cults, like multi-level marketing cults, like Amway, for example, and other multi-level markets that use mind control techniques, and religious cults. And that ultimately what we want to do is control our own minds, be our own selves. And for those of you who believe in, in God, and I'm not saying a Zeus-like anthropomorphized God, but the divine spirit, the divine being, it's very interesting. We're all different. We all have unique personalities and unique talents and abilities. And I truly believe that being true to ourselves is connecting us also to everyone else. And that ultimately what we really want to do is grow and love and serve and be connected not in an enslavement mode, but in a free will mode. Because it feels good. Because we're good people. Because we realize we're on this tiny little speck, planet Earth, floating around in this immense universe amongst immense other universes. And we need each other to survive in a very fundamental way. And this kind of exclusive, I'm better than you, I know the truth, and you don't, and we're going to heaven, and you're going to hell, and stuff, uh, is very archaic. So figuring out, helping you to figure out who am I, 
And when people say, I haven't a clue, I say, okay, well, do you like to paint pictures, or do you like music, or do you like to do dancing, or do you, like, what do you like to do? And people say, oh, yeah, I really like to dance, so I just really feel myself when I'm dancing. Oh, okay, so that's a part of your identity. Like, start there, you know? Um, and create yourself the way you want to be. You know, and you don't have to just, again, react against. You can make choices and look around at healthy people and say, you know what, I like those qualities. That person has compassion. That person is kind. That person is, 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 is a good critical thinker. That's another thing that I think is so vital is that we need to be in balance. We need to have our, our intuitive and our, our imaginative and our creative side, but we need our analytic side too to reality test. And you know what research is saying? We need to trust our guts. It's actually a visceral sense, especially when we're trying to figure out extremely complex things. It's like overload for our conscious mind. But our guts can tell us what to do. And in terms of people who get recruited into cults, when I ask them, when you think back to when you were first being recruited, what did you think? What, did you, what was your feeling? Almost universally, people say, I thought they were nuts. I thought they were crazy. I thought they were stupid. I thought they were childish. And the influence overrode their, their, their internal wisdom, their internal. So I'm mentioning a little bit about identity confusion, dissociative states. That's where you get triggered. And I want to just, I want to talk a little bit about triggering because it's a concept that's essential for all of you in your recovery. Remember Pavlov and his dogs? You know, Pavlov was working on digestion. He wasn't working on condition responses. He just happened to notice that as he was giving the meat powder to the dogs, the bell went off, and then the dogs were salivating, not with the meat powder, but with, with the bell. And it's called condition response, stimulus response. So we have five basic senses, and we can be triggered in any of those five senses. So we can see something to remind us of the cult, if you will, or trigger our cult identity, or hear a song, or you know, feel something. I haven't felt that way since. And you're you're back in that state of mind. And basically, what I say to all my clients is, again, you have to have the locus of control in yourself to control your own mind, your own thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And you should think about how you want to react to that stimuli. Or how would a normal person react to that stimuli? In my case, for example, the word moon. Okay? Whenever someone said, oh, look at the moon, I was back in the cold staring up at him. <laughs> you know, I had this huge picture of me kneeling at his feet, going, yes, Father, yes, Father, whatever you want, Father. Um, not pleasant. And I literally needed to say, how, do, how does everybody else react when they hear the word moon? Well, they see a picture of the moon, you know, the satellite that goes around the earth, you know? And I had to literally associate the word moon with the picture. And I had to take the picture of the cult leader and shrink it up and put it over to the side, and I decided to put him behind bars, and this is way before he was sent to jail, um, and call him Mr. Moon. And I had to choose to think of him as Mr. Moon Otherwise, it was like I wasn't in the cult. I was never in the cult. You know, the, old, the younger me was in the cult. So that's a little bit about that. Panic and anxiety attacks. Um, one of the number one mind control techniques that all groups use is phobia indoctrination. The inculcation of irrational fears. So that in the mind of a cult member, they can't imagine leaving and being happy and fulfilled. They can only generate negative movies. They can only hear the indoctrination in their voice. Leave that Satan talking. That's your lower self. That's your reactive mind. There's all these buzzwords, we'll get to buzzwords later. Reactive mind is a Scientology buzzword. 
But so the, the, the key is intellectually being able to discern what's a real danger, which will elicit legitimate fear reaction or fight or flight, versus what is a belief that somebody has inculcated into you that in order to keep you dependent and controlled. 